Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel and this series where we aim to take electronic circuit concepts and make them easy and practical to understand. This video aims to take a look at capacitors and most importantly what time constants are, why are they important, and time constants in RC circuits. Kindly note that this will be a two video series that aims to talk about time constants in RC circuits. This video will be concerned with talking about the time constant of charging RC circuits, while the second video will be concerned with discharging RC circuits. Before we get on with the video, if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through subscribing and sharing this video with your friends. I also have recently joined Patreon, so if you're interested in supporting the channel through Patreon, you can find the link of the Patreon page in the description below. I'd like to clarify that this video assumes that the viewer is familiar with capacitors and the concept of circuit connections. And if you're not, or you'd like to have a refresher, you can check out the videos in the playlist. Before we get on with the video, it's important to clarify some terms first. First, we have the steady state condition. A steady state condition is when a system i.e. the circuit that we're dealing with is in steady state and what that means is that the current at each point in the circuit is constant. Steady state is not just a concept in electrical and electronics engineering or in circuit theory, it's pro prominent in a lot of engineering theory and it basically means that the variables are stable or constant meaning that there is no changes in the variables of the system. As for the transient response, when we say transient response, it is the circuit's temporary response to a excite excitation that is applied to the circuit. And it is followed by the steady state response. So after something external that happens to the circuit, an excitation that is external that occurs to the circuit, the circuit will go into a transient response and following that transient response, you, the circuit will reach a steady state condition where all the variables that were jumbled up by that excitation will reach uh, stability. Finally, I'd like to uh, clarify reactive components and reactive components here are capacitors and inductors because they react to change. Unlike resistors, capacitors and inductors store and release energy based on the changes in applied voltage or current. So now that we are familiar with these concepts, let's get on with time constants. Electrical and electronic circuits may not always be in a stable or steady state condition. They can be subjected to changes in, in the input, uh, such as changing voltage levels or input conditions. For example, uh, a change to the input condition would be switching on a switch or closing a switch in a circuit, or uh, receiving an input from a sensor, so that would change the voltage applied to the input of the circuit. However, when a voltage or state changes, the circuit may not instantaneously respond to change, as in the case with resistive circuits, but they might take an amount to reflect that uh, change, no matter how small that time is. And that is especially true for circuits with reactive components, such as capacitors and inductors. The change of state from one stable condition to another occurs at a rate determined by a time constant. And it is a, an exponential value. The time constant of the circuit is, it defines how the transient response of the circuit's current and voltages are changing over a set period of time. Formally, the formal definition of the time constant is the time response 
of the circuit when an input step voltage or signal is applied. So if there's any change in the input voltage, then we would see a transient response and the time for that transient response is represented by the time constant. A resistor res uh, responds instantly to any change in voltage applied to it. That is because a resistor is, is a passive and linear device that does not store energy like capacitors do, but instead dissipates it in the form of heat. And when we say dissipate it in the form of heat, it means it gets really, really hot. But capacitors, unlike resistors, cannot react instantly to quick or step changes in the applied voltage. So there will always be this short time where, or a transient response, where there is time between the time for the capacitor to reflect that change in input. And as you can see from this equation, tau, which is the Greek letter denoting time constants in electric and electronic circuits, is equal to the resistance times capacitance. So let's consider this circuit that we have in front of us. And let's say that the capacitor is charging. It has been previously uh, not charging. It has been fully discharged. And we have closed the switch, completed the circuit, and we've just applied a change in the input because it was fully discharged, meaning that the voltage applied to it was zero. And now we've changed that input to 12 volts. As you can see from the graph, when we increase the DC voltage or that change of, of input voltage, that step change of input voltage from 0 to 12 volts, the capacitor draws charging current and charges up. As you can see in the graph, the rate is steep in the beginning or the curve is much steeper in the beginning because the charging rate is much faster in the beginning and then tapers off as we reach 5 tau or 5 T, which is five time constants. Thus, the trans transient response, that, that transitional period from zero volts across the capacitor to 12 volts, that transient response is in a, C in a RC series circuit is equivalent to five time constants. So let's take a more deeper look. Let's say we've just closed the circuit and an input change of 12 volts has been applied. At first, as we've mentioned, there will be a much steeper curve and change in the voltage, such that at one time constant, the capacitor will reach 63% of its maximum possibly full charged voltage, which is 0.63 of V1 or 0.63 into 12, which is about 7.56 volts. So at one time constant, we have 7.56 volts. The capacitor will continue charging up and the voltage difference between the source or the DC power supply and the capacitor will reduce and so will the current. Then at its final condition, greater than five time constants, you will see that the capacitor has been fully charged and that the circuit has returned to its steady state position. After five time constants, at six or eight five constants, the capacitor will act as an open circuit. And we can see that the current diminishes to zero. And therefore, the voltage across the capacitor is equal to the voltage across the power supply. As you've observed, the transient response is in, an is in an exponential and natural growth of the voltage across the capacitor. So as it attempts, or as the capacitor attempts to store charge onto its plates, we can define the, the growing voltage across that capacitor through this equation, where Vc is the voltage across the capacitor, and V is the voltage applied by the battery or the uh, power supply 
uh, E is the exponential and T is the time duration since since that change occurred and in our case that change is the switch closing and the circuit being closed circuit and RC is tau the constant tau that we talked about and through this equation we can find out the charge or the expected voltage I mean of the capacitor at a certain point in time after closing the switch of the circuit and having that sudden input uh, change. Thank you for watching this video and if you found it useful consider subscribing to my channel or if you'd like to support me you can do so through Patreon which you can find in the description below. Stay tuned for the next video and as always thank you for watching.